Hello everyone, it's Penny and I. I want to talk about guilt and shame that is warranted that hopefully will help to spark a backbone in some people because I just recently talked about guilt and shame in parenting and how there is no shortage of it. About what we should or could have done when they're little and how we could have prevented certain things from happening and for me, I was a kind parent. I was a loving parent. I believe I was patient for the most part. And so I did my best. I'm not saying, I, I, I did say earlier or in the previous video that memories crop up and we say, oh, I wish I could have prevented this or that from happening. And we just can't sometimes because we're human beings and the human body is, is, is a very fragile. So there's not, it's, we get hurt. All of us get hurt and our children get hurt sometimes too. So what I want to talk about is what I'm seeing is a lot of parents who have been estranged from uh, where their children took off or won't talk to them or won't let the grandkids have a relationship. I just want to say the only time we should feel shameful as an estranged parent is if we allow our adult children to continue to use and abuse us. When my adult daughter, it's my oldest daughter, left, I cut her cell phone off. I said, that's on you. You want to be an adult. You you know, you want to be a big girl. That's, that's your choice. But I'm not going to financially support you because you're an adult and you're off doing your own thing. And so I, I, that was it. And yeah, same thing with the youngest. When she moved out, I said, well, you know, you're responsible for your cell phone and all your bills. And that was it. And so it was after that that I, I, I did not further financially support my daughters. And I tried to reach out. I cried. I wanted them back. What can I do? I'm so sorry. And nothing. It's that's just the way it was. And so after a couple of years, my oldest daughter came back and said she was sorry and it wouldn't happen again. And so we moved in together and I eventually helped her get a car. It was a vehicle worth about 14000 <laughs> She said she could make the payments. And I said, great, I, I believe you and I support you. And absolutely so is the main signer and she's the co-signer. And um, we were together, lived together about two years. We had two different leases and two different apartments. And in the middle of the second lease, um, she decided she no longer wanted to live with me and she was going to take off. And I thought, oh, I, I hope you're still going to pay for this car. And lo and behold, there was a still a huge balance on it. And she left and she was making her payments and I would get the information. I'd get a call or notification from the bank that she wanted to defer payments. So she deferred up to five payments, which are all due at the end of the loan. <laughs> So three fifty a month times five, and <laughs> oh my God. that's fine as long as you can handle it. And uh, I at one point said, if you can't afford it, just return it. And, but she didn't, and she kept paying on it. And then I met my husband, and I was going to move in with him. And my uh, my neighbor across the hall at the apartment said, "There's a package in front of your door." And I said, "What?" And, so what is it? She goes, it's a car key. And I said, okay. So I went back to my apartment and my daughter's vehicle was parked in front of my apartment with the key inside. <laughs> what? And then I got a, no, a text from my daughter saying, I'm not paying for this anymore. This is on you. And I'm like, oh my, <laughs> oh no. And the balance on the car was like $8,900. I said, oh no. <laughs> and then come to find out the check engine light was on in the car. So in the four years she had the car, she had put 100,000 miles on it, and the check engine light was on. I took it to a mechanic. It was the knock sensor, the catalytic converter, and something else was shot. $1,300. <laughs> oh, my God. So I ended up having to take that responsibility on. I'm like, oh, no. So in the meantime, other than that, I have not financially given my children any money. But you hear these parents who still financially support their estranged adult children. They they pay for things. They allow them to come back and use them and take off and let them live in their home where the kids don't even talk to them and they're 20-some years. What is going on? <laughs> the only thing I should be ashamed of is having a being kind and generous and signing for a loan that I got screwed on. <laughs> 
And even then, I don't have to feel guilty or shameful because I thought I was doing what was right. But, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Like, we got to stop supporting, <laughs> allowing ourselves to be abused. Even if we gave birth to them, it doesn't mean they're, they can't turn around and be cruel to you. I mean, the minute someone walks out of your life, they've lost all opportunity for your your kindness, your generosity, your money. The bank of mom is closed. No, you can't come back in. You can't live with me if you don't like me. <laughs> what the heck is that? No. So anyways, it took a while. I have a backbone and that's it. So I hope this helps, but please, the only time you should be ashamed is if you can continue to allow people to use and abuse you. If you stop, you have nothing to be ashamed about. It's a learning lesson. I helped my daughter with the car. She dropped it off with a huge, and that's just the way it is. So I just wanted to talk about that and I'll be back.